Hello, I'm Bonnie Urbe. Welcome to To the Contrary, a discussion of news and social trends from diverse perspectives. Up first, legal wrangling over abortion. A federal appeals court heard arguments this week about a hotly contested Texas law that could be the new frontier for the abortion rights debate. The law mandates a strict set of building codes for clinics requiring upgrades that could cost millions. Pro-life proponents say they're necessary to ensure the safety of women. But pro-choice groups say the clinics don't need the upgrades, can't afford to comply, and will close. Abortion rights groups claim their opponents are using an underhanded strategy to close clinics and limit access by pretending they're concerned about women's health. Fifth Circuit judges in New Orleans will decide if the law is constitutional. So, Congresswoman Norton, is this the new strategy for pro-life groups by requiring clinics to upgrade and, and in effect, closing them? Pretty much, Bonnie. So far, the right has not been able to bring down a constitutional right. So, they're trying to do all they can to keep women from exercising it. Now, this is trying to protect women. This is saying basically any facility that treats women, or men for that matter, medically ought to have to live by the same standards as everybody else. And many abortion clinics to date have not, been had, to do, have not had to do that. Forcing abortion clinic closures is immoral. It has absolutely nothing to do with upgrades or health or safety. And it's an affront to women's basic human dignity. I'm all for women's health and women being safe, but I come from a medical family that has many specialties, and I know our private clinics in my family, they've had to comply with guidelines that come down that have nothing to do but for patient safety. But uh, uh, tell me how those, those, the kind of guidelines that a physician's office would have to follow are different from what's being put on uh, abortion clinics in Texas. Yeah, these regulations in Texas are absurd and they're dangerous. There are 41 clinics when this law first was passed. Now we're down to 17. D didn't that a similar law pass in Virginia? It did. It was thrown out, right? It, uh, well, actually, it's being amended, and I was actually at that State Board of Health meeting in Richmond recently where, uh, where we discussed that. Um, but in Texas, we went from 41 clinics, there's 17 today. There's only going to be seven if, uh, if these, the ambulatory surgical center requirement is upheld. So basically, it has nothing to do with patient safety. No, but let me new, jump back. No, no, no. There's a new study out from the University of California, San Francisco, that shows that abortion is overwhelmingly safe. We're talking about a quarter of 1% of abortions. This is over 50,000 abortions had a major complication. The complication rates are much higher with getting your wisdom teeth removed. That's like 7% to give a little context there. And but so let me give a little ridiculous. context here, Bonnie. The reality is we make our veterinary clinics have more safety precautions than we do abortion clinics today, and that is wrong. And to suggest that no clinics in this country that perform abortions uh, are not needing to have higher standards, look at the Kermit Gosnell Clinic in Pennsylvania that was shut down. He was put in prison because women died in his clinic, not because of just unusual things. Basic cleanliness standards were not upheld, and they weren't upheld, Bonnie, because nobody was making sure that they were. Well, what, Why would we not ask well, them to follow the same cleanliness standards of any other Well, if you're going to clinic? talk analogies, then you've really got to come to a real analogy. That was an, an abortionist that has been condemned by, by everybody. Uh, and it's but far he got from, along it's far for a long time typical, because nobody, was, checking because nobody was doing their job of making sure that the existing regulations were being he enforced. Was, well, no, that's well, the problem. The regulations weren't what, being enforced. What are the clinics objecting to? That they have to have wider hallways? That to, uh, Say, you know, sure, tell yeah. us what the problem is. We're talking is. about oftentimes over a million dollars in upgrades to comply, which is why these clinics are forced to close. You have to have these expansively wide hallways so that you could, you know, basically drive a truck down the middle of them. It mandates why do things we require like require those <laughs> hallways in other clinics? Drinking that's, fountains. Why do we require those hallways. Okay, you know, let's, I, I just want to hear. Let's what stop is. here and take a deep breath and focus on what these clinics are actually being forced to comply with. Okay, there. so wide hallways, what else? Wide hallways, uh, different, um, uh, what's the word for it? Uh, the hangover thing over the front door. The light. 
not oh, the light, not the light, excuse Awnings. Me. Awnings, <laughs> yes, thank you, yeah. awnings. I mean, these, so it's just expansive, ridiculous requirements. And the thing is, it has nothing to do with patient safety. The medical community has overwhelmingly uh, stood up in the face of these regulations and said, these don't help improve patient safety at all. And I just need to go back and uh, respond to something. I find it heartbreaking absolutely heartbreaking that this is an issue of women's basic human dignity and we talked about animals in comparison in veterinary clinics yeah it's just because you guys think standard. that we ought to have higher standards for animals than no, we do well, women well, well, we have veterinary clinics that have higher standards standards in terms of medical me, and and veterinary clinics, that is ridiculous you know, the, what, what happens in abortion uh, in abortion clinics is usually not surgical you go to a vet they, they have to be equipped to do anything that the pet requires. It, going into a woman's it, body, it's But somebody surgical. on the side get their, get their point out. They've had you know, let, 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 you know, in, in other words, you have to be prepared to cut him open. They don't just bring him there to do a simple procedure, one time, very narrow procedure. So to compare what uh, a full surgical clinic, where a full surgical clinic is necessary because of the nature of the procedures, to a, an abortion clinic, which normally is not surgical and is a very simple procedure, is to compare not just apples You're and oranges. You're suggesting that only second. women who, Wait. like, are four weeks pregnant get abortions. As we know in this country, people up to um, 20 weeks get abortions, and there's plenty of surgical activity involved in that. I don't under... I mean, look, nobody's forcing these clinics to shut down. The clinics themselves but, but, choose but, but, not to make the Genevieve, upgrade. And Genevieve, Planned Parenthood, a million-dollar industry, can give them Genevieve, some bucks if they stop. need it. Genevieve. It, it seems beyond absurd for me to, to for you to say mm -hmm. that no one's forcing them to close down when <laughs> the proponents of these regulations know that they don't have the millions of dollars to make those renovations. Bonnie, if they need those millions of dollars, why can't Planned Parenthood, a multi-million dollar industry, which gets millions of dollars from the federal government every year, why can't it give money to these clinics if it's so concerned about it? I think women's health is more important than these million dollar industry that Planned Parenthood. Oh, this right. women's right. health is a canard, okay? I went to the Board of Health meeting down in Richmond, and who was standing up in favor of the clinic regulations in Virginia? There was one man who said to the group, I, he opened his statement with, I believe it's a man's job to make sure that a woman does the right thing. You had signs outside with men holding signs that say, abortion hurts women. They cloak their message in health and safety. It has absolutely nothing to do with that. In fact, these regulations make women less safe. Women have to drive in Texas. We're talking an eight-hour round trip to get an abortion if you're going from Rio Grande Valley up to San Antonio. Well, the governor, um, the, the uh, governor elect Greg Abbott said, so let him go to a clinic in New Mexico. Yeah, if, yeah. if you don't think that this is a cloak for, for closing down the centers, I wonder what you think of the requirement in some states for ultrasound and to be read to the woman. You really think that's about women's safety? What, what I think is that I would have thought that this is an issue that, frankly, women of all sides could have come together on because this has nothing to do with stopping abortion. No, I, just gave, I, would I like just to gave you a, I just, I'll I just very gave you good, an example. I'll be honest I just gave you an example where they also I think ultrasounds are, are a I good thing for women. A forced yeah, ultrasound. Day. I don't, think, no, I, don't, I don't think they have to be forced, absolutely well, not. You're talking about a I, I understand wait, wait. that. One at a time, please. <laughs> you're talking about a vaginal ultrasound. I right? am. Okay, Which is that, forced because that, the woman was in Virginia, and I, th and I think that was ridiculous. But I do think... And if, Texas. Uh, but I Texas do, already has that law. Uh, a vaginal one? Oh, no, it's just regular ultrasound. Here's the deal. Ultrasounds are a great technique for people to see what's happening inside the womb. It's one reason I believe abortion has dropped in this country is because we now can see in the womb and we see what's going on. I want to get you in here. I, I, Sorry, I don't see what all the fuss is about. No problem. I come from a medical family. I tell you, my parents are going through the same thing right now in West Virginia. They own a private clinic. It's physical medicine and rehabilitation. They're not doing intrusive stuff. And those same uh, codes are being slammed at them. Make your hallways bigger. Change the awning. These same things. So I'm just kind of like, it's a democracy. These pro-life people have found a back way to do this if they, sh if they wish. But I think other clinics across the nation are being given these same regulations, whatever specialty they're in. Well, Planned Parenthood is very big, and it gets hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue. To, to be fair, why can't they pay for the reno these renovations for the 10 clinics 
in Texas that'll close. Well, I want to be clear about something first. Planned Parenthood does get a, a good chunk of federal money, but none of that goes to abortion services. There is a lot of segregation in funding, so that's a misnomer to think those two things are connected. But a lot of the clinics that are being forced to close are the independent clinics. They're, you know, it's a mom and pop shop where it's just a, a couple people, a family run business, and they're trying to help out patients as best they can. And so you can't have Planned Parenthood swooping in and saving everyone from this. And frankly, you know, Planned Parenthood Parenthood too. I think it's misleading to to portray Planned Parenthood as some as, you know like the Saks Fifth Avenue of healthcare. I mean they're providing women's some, of women's health care precisely because you know they're providing a lot of free low cost services to a lot of patients on the basis of need, and that's something that you know again it's not like a ritzy place. No.